Hello and welcome to Season 4, Episode 20 of the Saja Photography Podcast. My name is Jason Teal and we've done it. We've finally reached the end of Season 4 and whew, it's been a long time. I used to be able to bang these out in a few months or so and I actually thought for a while that maybe 20 episodes was too short for an actual full season. But this one has taken some time and... I really can't explain why. I think I just got busy and it the routine got out of hand or something, but I've been slowly trying to get back into that. And again, as I said in the last episode, I, I'm not going to really make any promises for season five. I'm just going to try and go through it and get as many episodes out as I possibly can, possibly weekly, possibly monthly. I'm just going to try and see what I can do. And I'm really trying to build on this consistency. It's, it's just a problem that like when you are a freelancer here in Korea, and by freelancer, I mean, you know, both photography and teaching, the, the trouble is, is that your schedule is all over the place. And, you know, you're trying to build consistency, but then if you get a new job or a contract or something, then that consistency is out the window. And for example, right now, my schedule is changing all over the place over the next couple of weeks and months. So who knows when I'm going to have time to actually record. And again, with the uh, new photography class on Saturdays, that means I've got Sunday to shoot and uh, just get all those other things done. So it's really hard to kind of squeeze in time to sit down where it's quiet and I don't have cats running around meowing everywhere and just get this done. So hopefully I can find that time in regularity and just get things out. So now with that being said, what have I been up to recently and what can I really say about this last season? And we'll get into that right now. Okay, so the basic reason that uh, I've been busy is for the most part, I've gotten back into a lot of my freelance business English classes. And I know this doesn't really have anything to do with photography, but as photographers here in Korea, and this is sort of what this podcast is centered around, we do have these other lives and these alter egos. I think very few of us are 100% professional photographers. And I think a lot of the people I'm trying to bring on to this podcast are those people. But the rest of us who are having to use English lessons or our other jobs to fund our hobby, I guess you could call it, our other passions, uh, where we have to do the daily grind. And, and that's basically what's been consuming a lot of my time. So basically, I've been working a lot. Actually, uh, throughout the week, I've been quite busy. And even as I said before, in the previous episodes about my photography class, I have been working on the weekends as well. So that's cutting into a lot of time. And you know, you have to divide things up quite a bit, you know, with personal life, with being a husband and everything like that, it all blends into less time for photography. Back when the pandemic was at its peak, and as you heard from many tearful podcasts, apologies for that. Yeah, I was out of work and sort of the only thing that was keeping me sane was basically going out and photographing the world around me just to sort of have some semblance of routine and some sort of thing to do while the rest of the world moved on. And I think like that was a kind of a hard hitting reality check because I, I love this community here in Ulsan, but the reality of it was that there are people who really cared about me outside of the city. And there were people who just didn't give a shit and moved on with their lives inside the city. So it was a tragic reality check, but something that I've moved on from now and I've got my classes back. I'm busy. I'm actually making more money now. So that is good. But that's also means that I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to, you know, driving up to, uh, say, Sokcho or somewhere and spending a few days photographing the seaside or something like that. As much as I would like to, I really have to just put my nose to the grindstone and, you know, recoup some of the expenses I've lost over the years and make time to shoot when I can. For example, these days I have spots open early in the mornings on, say, Wednesdays where I can scooch out to Busan or somewhere or just make use of my Sundays. So that's kind of what I've been up to 
professionally and work-wise these days, but what about photography in the general sense of just getting out and shooting? In that sense, I have been getting out here and there to photograph and really test out some of the equipment that I got from k and and my new tripod that I picked up as a sort of a present to myself. And most recently, I got out with Lee Kelly as he had finally received his new filter and tripod, and he was eager to sort of get out and sort of, you know, stretch his wings with landscape photography, which was kind of an interesting experience because normally when I go out shooting with people, they're landscape photographers, and Lee Kelly is more centered around photographing people. So this was a very interesting trip. Uh, We went up to Gompo, and That is a favorite place of mine, and I reached out to another photographer who I'm going to try and get on the show maybe later on in the year, which is Brian Kim, and he is a master of these locations up and down this side of the country, so I really want to touch base and hopefully at some point in time even just get out and shoot with him. At any rate, Lee and I headed up the coast to Gompo, and I left my house at probably around 3 a.m. or so, and crappily enough i ended up getting a speeding ticket or something along the way so i still have to pay for that but we hit gompo and it was yeah kind of a an okay sunrise well there wasn't really a sunrise it was just more like dark to light because this is the rainy season we've just sort of ended it now and mid rainy season you're just going to get a lot of gray skies and that's sort of what we got but the cool part about it was Due to the heat, because it's summer, because you're by the ocean, there was a buttload of fog and it was really kind of cool. Also really challenging to photograph. So I got a couple of good shots. Now, the most disappointing one was early on, I was telling Lee that one of the things I do is I usually crack off a shot or two to dial in all of my settings when, you know, the situation isn't really great. So I'm telling him this, you know, before the sun has even like crested the horizon, it's still pitch black and I'm sort of dialing in my settings. Now, one of the things I forgot was I had left my, you know, the stabilization on. I was shooting something else earlier on the week. I had the image stabilization on on the lens. Now, if you shoot any long exposure, switch that fucking thing off because it's going to screw up your shots. You may not notice it initially but it's there's going to be a little bit of shake and that's what happened and the worst part about this was I got a really cool shot and it was basically still dark but a squid boat passed behind the lighthouse and illuminated a really nice sort of um yeah light trail but it it cast off a nice blue bright streak across the frame when I got it home it was shaky as shit from that image stabilization, which I switched off after that shot, noticing that it was on. And yeah, like I tried to salvage the shot. It it turned out okay. But when I shared the shot and no one really noticed the shake, yeah, it was a winner for sure. But it's also one that I just look at and, well, shake my head basically. So That's something that you guys should really look into. If you're doing long exposure, make sure you turn off the image stabilization because it will make your shots shaky if you're using a tripod, which you should be if you're doing long exposure. At any rate, uh, Lee and I got some shots along the coast, which were okay. And then we headed down and we found another spot where the fog was just like, you know, just insane. You know, like I think after a few moments, we couldn't even see you know, into the water. Like it was just like, if you were walking, you could maybe see your hand in front of your face, but not much farther than that. It was pretty crazy. So after that, we we headed down to uh, Gomunsaji, which is like the two pagodas near kind of Gyeongju, but it's just right off the coast. So it's not, it's just in the middle of nowhere, basically, but it's a cool spot. It's a historical place. And yeah, we tried to do some shots, but nothing really came out about that. And I I do want to bring up the fact that when you're out doing this kind of stuff, you know, sometimes the shots you get, like you may find yourself at a really great location, but it might not work. And that was the case. Like, I mean, we, we tried a few shots, but I mean, they weren't spectacular. They weren't, you know, beautiful sunrises and stuff like that. But so anyway, we cut our losses and just 
kind of grabbed some coffee and, and went home. And one of the biggest changes I've noticed is that usually over the years, I, I make my own coffee and I, I bring like a little coffee kit with me. And the funny part about how fast Korea changes is that now there's so many what I would call like, well, they call them Muin cafes, but like 24 hour staffless cafes dotted all up and down the coast. And you really can just like, you know, after your shoot or during your shoot, as I did, just wheel into these cafes, get a iced Americano because it's freaking hot even in the mornings up here. And it's, it's, you know, something that the progress I just, you know, people comment about, well, you know, you're losing your jobs and stuff like that. But in some cases, you know, when it's, yeah, like three or four in the morning when I stopped into the one and they put one actually right behind the Munmu Daewang Am. Yeah, it's three in the morning. I, I don't want to have someone working at that hour out in that location, but I do or I wouldn't mind having a decent cup of coffee. And this was a little cool place. It's, you know, cheap enough and you can get a fresh cup of coffee. So that's kind of one of the little progress tips that I love about um, just Korea in general. And then just as a person who is up usually in the morning, it's it's great. But I, I still will bring my little uh, Stanley Lunchbox coffee kit as I prefer to make my own coffee, especially it gives me time to sort of take in the surrounding area and stuff like that. Now, moving on to season five. That's the big question is what am I going to do? And I'm I'm taking a step back. I, I will be hopefully kicking out an episode soon with the new music and everything like that. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but every season I sort of change up the intro music and the outro music. So I got some new stuff planned. But I think most of the time I'm just going to try and kick out some new stuff regardless of the plan. I just want to get back into the rhythm of the production of these podcasts and whatnot so you know bear with me I, i'm trying to get back onto a sort of a steady stream and kind of the idea that i'm kicking around today with not just my podcast but with the blog and everything is just tell more stories by that i mean i i just want to sort of kind of show what i do not behind the scenes but kind of got me thinking when we were up in gompo Lee turned to me and said, like, how do you find these places? Because they're like really unique places. It's not Seoul or Busan or even Ulsan. And I was like, well, you know, like over the years, I've talked to different photographers. I've driven up and down this road hundreds of times and just stopped into these places. And when I stepped back and thought about sort of the area and what goes on here, and there's stories there. It's it's different from just taking a landscape shot and, you know, processing it and sharing it in the communities, I, I kind of am thinking about using the blog and maybe even my derelict YouTube to sort of show what these communities look like before and after the photo shoot. And then, you know, use my TikTok. If you don't know, I, I have TikTok too. I'm, I'm not dancing or anything. Good God, no. But if you're on my TikTok, then you know I sort of show behind the scenes, like usually just with my tripod and sort of the ASMR of the area. I may continue to do that, but what I'm sort of leaning towards is just sort of kind of building the stories to show people what life is like outside of Seoul, Busan, and all the major cities. Because I think now that Korea is popular, now that they're gearing up for the Expo 2030, a lot of people sort of think that Korea is this mega urban center. And for the most part, it is. But the places that I travel to, the places outside of the major centers, have these stories. There's this charm about the early morning hours when people are getting up, they're friendly, they see you taking pictures, they give you a nod, or they ask you some, you know, where are you from, that sort of thing. And it's a beautiful time to be out and about shooting. So what I'm thinking of is just taking these stories, writing about them, shooting more of the scenes around, and then putting that into a uh, video or a blog post or even a story here on my podcast. So 
a lot of uh, things in the works, but I thought I would let you in on that as we're finally finishing off season four. Thank you so much for being here along my journey. And with that being said, I, I've actually got to get my button gear and head out to my uh, company class. So take care and I will talk to you hopefully soon with the brand new season five. Thank you so much. Have a great week and get out there shooting.